Today I want to talk to you about the gender data gap. There are nearly 8 billion people on earth today and half of these people are women. Despite that, men are still considered the default with regards to, well, everything. You may have also noticed that men still hold most positions of power, whether it's in politics, finance, science, medicine, or tech. And this has had a massive impact on who is being taken into account when designing and planning our world. In other words, our world is being made by men for men. And I am not making this up. In fact, throughout history, women's perspective has not been recorded. The standards of men have been taken to represent everyone. And when it comes to women, our standards, well, there's very little record at all. This has an impact on our everyday lives from smartphones, which have been designed with only men's hand size in mind, to the height of our car boot door, which has been set at a man's average height. Voice recognition technology that is 70% less likely to accurately understand women because many algorithms are trained on 70% male data sets. And of course, medication. A lot of it does not work when a woman is on her period because women were not included in the clinical trials. Honestly, the examples are endless and they can be found everywhere from city planning to economics and the everyday products that we buy and they all have one thing in common and that is that they are lacking female perspective. Now that is what is referred to as the gender data gap. And the point is that we are living in a world that has been designed for the average man. Because generally speaking, data has not been collected on the average woman. There are gonna be people out there who are gonna say, so what? What's the big deal, right? Just stand on your tippy toes, sit in a chair that's a little bit too big, stop being so fussy. But you see, this gap actually matters. Talking about it does not make us fussy. It is important because not only does it affect our everyday lives in a way we are so used to, we don't even notice anymore. It also contributes to bias and it widens the gender gap in other areas. Oh, and also sometimes it's a matter of life and death. Like, did you know that most cars are generally 71% less safe for women than men because they've been designed using male dummies when testing for crash impact? Even in recent years when female dummies have been introduced in most trials the male dummy is still the driver which is where the biggest impact of the crash would occur despite the fact that in America for example there are more women drivers than men or in medicine take heart disease for example which kills more people in the United States than anything else historically heart disease research was mainly done on men by men so male symptoms are considered to be the norm while female symptoms are atypical and as a result, women are misdiagnosed up to 50% more than men and are more likely to be dismissed without treatment. My point is, this gap sometimes literally kills us, but we as a society have accepted it, and it's not okay. Now, I talk a lot about equality, and honestly, it's a minefield with so many aspects to consider. It truly is not just one thing, but I strongly believe that if we want to have real equality, we have to fight against this basic bias that frames women as less important. In a world that data is everything, women cannot be excluded. And there are a lot of reasons why this is still a thing, political, financial, the fact that men still hold most positions of power, but fundamentally what has to change is the attitude towards women, the subconscious bias that still frames men as the default in our society and women as the abnormal. We have to arrive at a point where we truly see men and women equally important and that is why women must be included at all levels of leadership and decision-making positions so that we can plan and design a world that takes us into account. The end.